Welcome, everybody. This is the Thursday evening Viper Trading Webinar. If you're here to learn about trading futures markets using the Viper tools, you are absolutely in the right place because that's what we're here to do tonight. First, we're going to knock our standard disclaimer out of the way, so let's take care of that real quick. All communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational purposes only. Futures trading does involve risk, and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar or other webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And, of course, everybody here does know tonight that you do trade at your own sole discretion. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to mix it up a little bit. I've got This is a, a two-part series. This is part one of uh, what we call uh, uh, detailed mid-band trades. And uh, I've been focusing in on that for the past probably two months, like every webinar talking about mid-band trades. So I'm going to go ahead and mix it up just a little bit. Um, but first, let me get over to, uh, to of course, well, most of you know that my, my uh, favorite instrument is ES. It's my best friend right now, given the current volatility in these markets. Uh, we have some visitors here. We had like a, what do you call it, um, uh, winter open house. And so a lot of people are visiting us. Uh, so welcome. Uh, you will be invited to the live room tomorrow and the webinar on Saturday. It's the end of the week. Uh, and we have a lot of people on free trial. So if you're brand new, let me just take literally like two minutes, like a, a minute or so to explain what you're looking at. We trade futures markets. Uh, we don't trade stocks. We don't trade bonds or options or Forex, strictly futures. And um, if you're not familiar with futures, you can go to the uh, primary site uh, that is responsible for uh, clearing and uh, handling a lot of the uh, futures trading. Or if you're learning more about futures and you want to sort of get up, bone up to speed, I'll just real quick show you this, this website. It's called CM, CME Group. That's short for Chicago Mercantile Exchange, cmegroup.com. Now, all the uh, various instruments, uh, uh, or not all of them, but a lot of them are listed about halfway down the page. You can see these agricultural products. You know, you just uh, just mouse over; it'll tell you what you know what they are. Uh, energy products, of course, everybody knows we trade uh, crude oil futures. We don't really trade natural gas or any of these other ones. We focus mainly on on crude there. Uh, interest rates, we don't really trade this too much. These are your bonds, futures, tw uh, treasury bond futures, T-note futures. Uh, equity indexes, we focus pretty heavily on this. Um, here's your E-mini S&P. Of course, that's a yes. That's one we're going to show. Uh, all the equities are on uh, what's called the March contract. So every quarter, these roll over a lot like option contracts do. Right, every quarter they roll. Uh, we used to trade Nasdaq, the E-mini Nasdaq in the room. We don't, don't do that anymore, excuse me, because it's so volatile. Same with YM. YM used to be in the room. It was a good, excuse me, good friend of ours. What happens is the uh, algos for the big boys get involved and they start pushing these markets around, and they're very hard to to uh, manually trade. So we 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 sort of booted those two and wound up with the E-mini Russell. And we're going to look at a, a E-mini Russell chart tonight. Uh, the S&P futures are $50 a point. There's four ticks per point, so each tick is $12.50, and the Russell is $5 a tick. The other one in the room, of course, is the gold futures. That's also $10 a tick. Um, and, uh, you know, gold's kind of funky um, because, you know, some, some days it just, it just sort of sits there, and then other days it'll just take off and run like a big dog. So you got to kind of watch that. Now, before we move forward with looking at this chart and talking in more detail about what you're looking at on this chart, I wanted to uh, just pause for a second and take a quick show of hands. If you trade futures right now, can you go and type in to the chat box what instruments you trade? So if you trade futures, just go ahead and type in, you know, anything, anything, you know, whatever, whatever you trade, NQ, ES, CL. You know, GC, 
ZB, ZN, you know, it could be anything, whatever. What, what do you trade? Just give me a minute here. I see a lot coming in. I see a lot of crudes. I see a lot of ESs. A couple of Russells, a ZB. Oh, Ed, okay. Ed, he trades the bonds. Emerizio hey, Ciao Bella. Welcome, my friend. We're just getting started. Well, I'm trading that gas. Cool. All right. CL and ES. Those are good. CL. A lot, mo, ma mainly CL and ES. Okay. So I'm going to just type down a couple of things real, real quick. So when, whenever you leave here or you're watching a rerun of this, you can put this sort of top at your, uh, you know, top of your list here. So I'm just going to put it this way. I'm going to say, I'm going to say it like this. Your futures. Instrument selection is key and critical to your success. So what do I mean by that? Financial instrument selection is key and critical to your success. Now, I, I sh it, it's so critical that I probably should open every single webinar with this sentence right here. It's because every instrument is a little bit different in how it moves in terms of volatility. Sometimes I'm going to just fl flip a couple of charts up in front of you here real quick. So here's a Russell chart. Now, what you're going to notice about Russell you know, just sort of visually looking at it, not even maybe some of you not even sure what you're looking at. But you can see here there are periods where, you know, the Russell can get very, very range bound. If you're into ranges, you know, you can they're certainly tradable if they're over 25 ticks. And then you'll get, you know, Russell will give you some bursts. You know, you'll get a burst here. It went long, long trend. And we'll talk about trade entries in just a little bit. You know, and then it chops around a little bit. The thing that makes Russell funky, to, and, and the reason I move away from it, or I'll, when, most days what I'll do is I'll tuck it on like the fourth screen. Like it won't really be my go-to instrument. Um, if I see something not, the setting up that looks really juicy and good and kind of in line with what we're doing, then I'll go ahead and take the trade. Let me show you some quick examples, and then we'll come back to, to what we were talking about. Let me just show you very quick examples. And this is the frustrating thing about about the Russell. Now, notice what happened here. There was, there, there was, uh, uh, and I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna cage it this way. By the way, I'm here in California, so this is all Pacific time. You would want to convert this, uh, what, what the, what the market's doing here, to your local time zone. So it be here. Here would be 6:30 equity market open in the U.S. So of course, if you're on the East Coast, that'd be 9:30, right? Now let's talk about what you're looking at here. Um, we basically have in a, in a long condition when a market starts to move into what we call an uptrend, which means the market is going up, background is green, mid band and all the bands are stair stepping up, which is a thick line here and the four bands below and four bands above. Bars are predominantly blue, but they can also turn yellow around the mid band right here. Now, Right before the open in the pre-market session, I don't know if you guys caught this in the room. I didn't get there until closer to 6.30. Maybe you caught it. Maybe you didn't. In a long condition, we have three types of trades. Okay. In fact, they're all here on this chart, so it's good. That's perfect. We can talk about them. In the case of uh, uh, getting long here, the minimum criteria to get long is a retracement under line 6, and under the stealth. So can you see here that the, 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 uh, this little collection of bars right in here are sitting in what, what essentially is, here, here's band one, band two, band three, band four, band five, band six. The thin green line above uh, band six is called line six. And the bars sort of hover inside of this little box band area right here like such now we have a green background and we could make note of the fact that this this thrusting move this push right here starting actually kind of down here turn the background green 
the the uh, the mid man and all the bears the bar stars they're stepping up and so this is what we call a minimum criteria long entry it has to get into this band right here break line six and break stealth and I, that's a good entry right there now this turned out to be a most excellent trade let's just do some quick numbers on this let's say you ran it all the way up to here let's do a quick quick uh, calculation on this puppy right here I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it but we can figure out real quick how much money you would have made on this I don't know let's use some round numbers let's say you got filled at 50 and you got out at uh, I don't know whatever up here 56 56 55 something 60 ticks uh, how much is this trade worth for one lot if it ran 60 ticks. And I told you what the tick value was earlier, so this is a quick quiz to make sure everybody's awake and paying attention to what we're saying here. How much money is one contract? You got long right here, and you stopped out right here. Approximately, you know, within a few ticks, depending on your actual fill, you made about 60 ticks, less commission. How much is this trade worth for one contract? Pull out your gonculators, figure it out. Well, it, we said earlier that that sixty uh, or uh, uh, Russell's tick value was five dollars, right? Five dollars. We said so. Five times sixty is three hundred, right? Three hundred or three bones per lot. Let's actually get a feed into the second part of my question here. So let's just let's just go ahead and put this right on here. So you had a, uh, uh, and I see some other questions come in from you, uh, uh, Chuck. I'll circle back and answer that. So here we have an RTY long trade that ran uh, 60 ticks. So a one lot on that, one lot to one contract is $5 times 60 is 300, right? And if you put two on and you let it run the whole way, you made $600. That's two contracts. Now, second part of the question. If you put two lot on here and you made $600 in this trade, would you be done, yes or no? Done mean done, meaning finished trading. Would you be, would you be at or beyond your goal for the day and therefore done trading. So that begs the question. I see a lot of yeses coming in. So that begs the question, and I'm going to pause here for a second. Just just go ahead and type in what your daily goal is. Yeah, that was $600 in like seven minutes. What's your goal? What's your goal? Well, how much money do you want to make every day? So actually, this this trade technically set up about a little under two minutes before the market opened. So you would have had to be in the live room. I'm sure Gary called this. I I don't know that I that I saw or caught this. I didn't get in until a little bit later. Six hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. I went to make more, but I need to get consistent. Make five hundred dollars, five hundred thousand later. All right. So let's go back over here. Let's circle back. So we said futures instrument selection is, in, is critical to your success. So what is the second thing? What would be another thing we would type in here? You must know your profit goal for today, for each day, right? Now, if you don't know your profit goal, and you just and I only see maybe about half of the people, maybe third, answered the question. Either you don't feel like answering, which is cool. You know, you don't have to participate in these. It's a lot better if you do. Uh, but I can tell you for a fact, 
It, the people, the traders I've known in 20 years that have profit goals and know what instruments they're trading are, you know, probably 80% more uh, um, profitable and efficient and successful than the ones who don't. So, you know, if you're just sort of randomly picking instruments from day to day and you're not really clear how much you, you, you want to make for that day, you're, then you're just sort of flopping around the market and kind of guessing. And guessers usually don't last too long. Now, if you know your profit goal, let's just put it in here. Um, let's say five to six hundred. Most of the most of the numbers sort of came in in that in that uh, in that area right there. So, if that is your goal, when you start trading in the morning, what is the first thing that goes through your head? Let's assume that you figure out what instrument you want. Let's assume that's off the table. You've traded crude, you traded a little bit of gold, you tried to, some, some um, currencies out a little bit, you dabbled your toe in the dollar, and you settled on ES. So check mark number one, future instrument selection, done. Check mark, done. Now, when you come into trading, what I say to myself is, how am I going to make fill in the blank profit goal today? Well, you filled in the blank. Most of you said five or six hundred dollars. I want to make five to six hundred dollars. Well, explain to me how you're going to do that. Let's go ahead. I'll, 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 I'll hold on for a second. Everybody who typed in numbers here, which is a whole slew of people, 300, 500, 350, 200. is a good, reasonable goal. Okay, so enumerate how you're going to do that. How are you going to make that 300? How are you going to make that 600? How are you going to do it? I mean, that's a pretty important question, right? I mean, you said, yes, I want to trade futures. Yes, I'm doing it part-time to make some extra money. Yeah, I aspire to trade full-time for a living. That's what I want to do. I love trading. And I want to make $600 every day, which I think comes out to, you know, around 100 grand a year. Okay, how are you going to do it? Oh, I'm getting some good answers. Here, let's see what people were saying here. Uh, must evaluate performance after support and resistance of his overall makeup. I promise never count counter trade again. Wait for my trade setup. Okay, those are all good answers. I trade ES. Wait five minutes after the open. Take a good solid mid band trade when I can. Okay, Toby, that's good. Bruce, look for a specific setup. Wait for it, then execute when the setup presents itself. That's a that's a good one right there, Bruce. Let me repeat that one. Bruce says, look for a very specific setup. Wait for it to occur, then execute the trade when the setup presents itself to me. Perfect. That's a good one. Steadfast in my goal. Five goals. Five trades to get the goal. Least amount of trades. Look for mid bands. Trade my instrument until I hit 500. Now that's where I'm heading. That's where I'm heading. I'm heading right for that. You hit it right on the head. If you said that you want to trade ES, okay, so let's do some, some hypothetical scenarios here for some of you. And you, you can fill in a blank with whatever, you know, your, your uh, uh, chosen instrument is. But for, t for the sake of tonight's discussion, let's put in, um, let's say you're trading ES, right? And you said that your goal was five or 600. So trading ES how many points or ticks do you need to make that much money on ES? Now, you remember, about 20 minutes ago when we started, we said how much ES was worth per point and per tick, yes? How many points? How many ticks? If you want $500 on ES, how many ticks is that? How many points do you have to get? Okay, you got to do the math. So here's let me let me explain the exercise that we're doing. Let me let me do a, I'm gonna I'm gonna help. Some of you are com completely new to this, so I'm gonna um, I'll back up and take my time to help you, which is good. So you, everybody understands what, what what exactly is we're doing here. Some of you might be a little bit like I have no idea what <laughs> what the heck you're even talking about. Okay, 
So we said ES was worth $50 per point, right? Per point of movement, which, and there's four ticks per point. So each tick, therefore, is worth 1250. Okay, you remember those numbers from a little bit ago? Good. So if you let's do a couple examples. So let's say hypothetically your goal was $500. Then how many points do you need? Yeah, do the math. 10 points, right? You need to capture 10 points of movement on ES with one contract to make $500. Now that equals 40 ticks. Let's do another goal. Let's say goal number two is, uh, is a little bit different, but similar. Uh, let's say the goal is, is $600, but you're trading two lot. You're trading two contracts now. So how many points and or, or ticks do you need to make 600 trading two lot? Okay, remember the numbers. So you can do it in points or ticks. Just add another $100 onto it, right? So let's do some quick math together, right? So so two lot, let's break it down. So for each contract, you need to make $300, right? So we're taking the profit goal divided by two. So each contract needs to make 300. So in that case, you need to make go six points. Some of you I see are typing it in. Good. Six points. Or um, uh, six times four is 24 ticks. So that's how you calculate how to get to your goal, right? So if you're trading one contract, let me let me let me modify this slightly so everybody's on board with this. Uh, I should should say with two lot. Everybody understands that's 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 uh that's contracts, right? And this one was with one lot, right? So now what we've done is we've taken our goal for the day and we've broken it down on our, on our chosen instrument. And this is just an example. You would fill in blanks for your own. If it was crude, you would use $10 a tick if it was CL, right? And you would accordingly count. So you would need 50 ticks of movement on crude to get $500 on a one lot. You can do the math for your instrument. Just take your instrument. Okay. Now. Let's talk about what happened this morning on ES. Let's, for, let's fast forward. Okay, here is the pre-market session. Um, Midnight Pacific was right here coming into Thursday morning. Most of you know, of course, this is the Asian session trading over here. After the market closed, the Asian session was a downtrend. So these were all shorts. All these retracements were short trades. Here's a short trade here, just shy of the mid-band. The band, the, so the mid-band trade is de defined by bars sitting on or around the mid-band. So let's look at co a couple quick examples in the short side. Once a market enters this area right here under the mid-band, or if the bars sit directly on the mid-band itself, or they go slightly higher into this band here, this area, and including the band itself, is considered what's called a mid-band trade. So that's that's the notion of thrust and retracement, yes? And that's how we trade. So we trade these markets. Here's a thrust, and here's a retracement. So when you hear something in a live room like, you know, if, if, uh, if uh, ES retraces anywhere up around 14 and it rolls over near the mid-band, I would look to short a kiss and roll up there. That's what that means. So that, what, what that's saying is that that, the, that you're in a downtrend. We're looking for shorts, and we're looking for retracements to come up 
close to or at or on the mid band. So that's the, that's where those numbers come from. Let me go back to the other. There was a question I didn't answer on that other, on that Russell chart. Let me uh, bring it back up real quick. Hold on, stand by one second. Uh, as I recall, and I think Chuck H, that was you. And so I apologize for not answering your question. So let me circle back, take care of that real quick. Um, let me see here. Okay, here's a, here's the wrestle again. Okay, remember our long trade right here. His question was, as the bars were forming in this in this uh, band right here, how did you not? How did you know that the bars were not going to go deeper? You know. Maybe, maybe somewhere like, you know, closing down into here or closing down, you know, even deeper than that. Maybe, maybe continuing on down like that. Now, here's the thing. Okay. And, and, and that's why you hear this in the room a lot too. You might hear something to the effect of, are you going to trade the long side only? Are you trading the short side only? Are you going to let the, but you're going to let that box trade go either way. What that's saying is let's, let's blow this up. So what we're saying is. In the case of the long trend, if you use an object trader box to take a trade and the trade and the trend is up, you would set the box to take long trades only. Right? In an uptrend, right? So in this case, what we're saying is it really doesn't matter if the if the if the bars go lower as I show right here. You know they go down, they go on the mid band, they may, may dink around all the way down here. You know who knows how deep it's going to go. The bottom line is that even if it went, I guess I'm in, a, in a roundabout way of saying it doesn't matter because you're, it's not taking trades. Now, if for some reason you had a box that was going either way, it would be possible to take the shorts. But generally in an uptrend, that's not recommended. Okay, so that's that's what uh, that's what that puppy was right there. That should answer your question there, Chuck. Uh, okay, let's go back over here. Let's look at the open on uh, ES. Let's see what happened on ES at the open. Ready? Okay, let me blow this up so we get really, really clear about what happened here on ES at the open of the equity markets today in the U.S. So as I mentioned, the uh, opens at 6.30, which is actually right about here. So pop quiz. Make sure everybody's awake. Ready? You're only getting five seconds on this. Is this a mid-band trade, yes or no? You're just going to type in a Y or an N per the definition of mid-band trade. Just type in, we got five seconds. Type in a Y or an N. Is this box a mid-band trade, yes or no? Four seconds. Don't hesitate. You should just, no, just, just hit boop, Y, boop, N. Three seconds. Two seconds. <coughs> Excuse me. You don't have to say what direction it's going. You don't have to say if it's long only or short or what type of trade you're taking. Just is it a mid? Does it meet the criteria of a mid-band trade? Yes. Sorry, I take a quick sip of tea there. No, this is a yes. This is a mid-band. Remember, we define a mid-band trade as anywhere in in between this band and this band. Inclusive, inclusive of the mid-band itself. Now, this is at 4.35 o'clock in the morning. This is in the pre-market session. You know, you have to be an early bird. You know, if you, uh, there would be like, uh, what was that, uh, 7.30, 8 o'clock Eastern. So convert that to your time zone. You know, if you're an early bird and you're trading, you could actually caught that. You got a little pop out of it. Now, right in here, as I recall, what happened was, and sometimes this happens, okay? So you have to be prepared for this. Um, Gary had drawn, I came in here and I started to look at the market like right in here. 
and I think Gary had drawn an uptrend line that looks something like this. And the logic was, as long as this, this area holds here, you could go ahead and get long and put your stop right under the break of here. Do you remember that? Remember that, Minaj? Brian, anybody in the room? Remember? Well, I wound up I wound up taking it, and I, I can't remember exactly which bar I got filled on, but I did, I did get long in here. I think it was one of these bars right here that got me long. And this turned out to be a good trade. It went from here at uh, 08 and a quarter. And then there was another entry here that met the minimum criteria for a long right here. All right, quick question, pop question. Three seconds on the clock. John said he, John S. said he took that. Good. Is this a mid-band trade, yes or no? By the time we get done with this, everybody should be expert mid-band traders. This box right here on ES, yes or no? Three seconds left. Two seconds. Just a wire in. Boop. That's how simple this trading system is. That's why, you know, I love these bands because they really give you they give you form and structure to take trades. Oh, excuse me. No, if you didn't have. Oh, I apologize. I'm trying to wake up here. Maybe get some espresso. Um, if you didn't have these bands on here, it, it'd be very difficult to see how it would take these trades. So it really gives you a lot of form and structure to get in and take trades. Yes, that is a mid-band trade. So let's go ahead and show each of the trades, uh, and then we'll analyze how much money they made. Okay, so let's say you got filled here and you got out here. There's uh, there's trade number one. There's trade number two. That didn't give me much. That was a quick one. Trade number three. I don't know. So you got filled here and you scalp something out there real quick. And let me ask you this. Here's the final question on ES, and then we're going to add all this up. Do these bars right here meet the minimum criteria for a trade, yes or no? We'll put four seconds on the clock. Is this box, based on our definition of minimum criteria to get in a, a long, and you'd be looking for longs only, right? Trend, trend is up, stair stepping up, retracement. Up, retracement. Pull back, we get long. Pull back, we get long. Pull back, we get long. Yes. Remember, it's got to come under line six, the thin green line, and it's got to come above uh, or underneath the green stealth line, which is the green sneaky snake looking line right there. Let's see what that one turned into. Continue to run up. I'll just point these trades out here real quick and we'll add them all up. These are all minimum criteria trades. They work in an uptrend. What's going to happen, here's what you're going to find over time, is that if you're in a powerful uptrend where the buy programs are pushing the market higher, pushing, 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 and the depth of your retracements are, is, can be very shallow, Many many times you won't in, in a big run you won't get a lot of you won't get a lot of mid band pullbacks like this one right here. What's happening is the algos the AI algos that are running are taking profits so they're getting long, and they're staying long from down here. They're getting long, getting long, holding, stopping out, re-entering, scalping, just like we do, right? That's what causes pullbacks in a trend. Right, that's what causes pullbacks in a trend. So here, depending on the, the location of your stop, you know, you had the one there, you had another one here. I'm not going to do them all. Now we're at 10 o'clock in the morning, so I'm not going to go after this. Let's take the first. Let's go ahead and take the first hour of trading and add things up. 7:30 is somewhere right around here. So let's add up the first three trades, and then we'll figure out the fourth one, and we'll move on to a different instrument. Yeah, yeah. Ideally, so 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 Brian's question. We have some uh, some questions on the minimum criteria entry coming in here. Uh, yes, normally what would happen is you would put a uh, object trader box or a buy limit order here above line six. 
So it really depends on when you drew this box and where you drew it at. It's quite possible if you draw, drew the box early, you could be f uh, filled long on the close of this bar right here. Otherwise, you could be filled long on the close of this bar right here. So, you know, it really is a function of exactly how you drew your region box and how you... By the way, region box is, is a tool that is part of Object Trader. That's part of our pa uh, uh, package of, of indicators, and, and uh, it's, a, it's a strategy. Yeah, so it's got to close above that line six. And line two for a short. Yeah, yeah. So if you're, if you're, if you're uh, tr uh, trading... Let's go back over here. If you're trading the short side... Well, it depends on how far it went up. If it's all the way up here at the mid band, you know, it's going to have to close down through that. So in this case, you would have been short on that bar right there. Yeah, exactly. All right. So let's do some quick uh, uh, back of the envelope calculations here real quick. Let's say you got filled at, uh, let's use a round number 08. Long. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Hold on a second. Sorry about that. Sometimes I get a little tickle in the throat. Uh, what were we saying? Oh, yeah. Okay. 8, oh, 8, and you get out. I don't know. Let's use a round number. Let's say 15. So uh, trade number one. Let's go ahead and get right, make some notes real quick here on what happened with these ES trades. So trade... One made seven points. You know, let's make a trade number one so we don't get confused. Trade number one made seven points, which equals 28 ticks, right? Seven times four. Okay. So that's trade number one right here. How much did trade two make? Not very much. By the time you got filled, let's say oh, 14 and three quarter, you got out at 16. This was a little scalpy. It's maybe six ticks. What is that? 14? Uh, I don't know. Maybe six ticks. Let's give that trade number two. I wonder if I can copy and paste here. Can I paste? Can I let me paste here? No. Just have to do another one. Trade number two, six ticks. Let's see if things, the keyboard's fighting me here tonight. Being a funky little puppy there. That's this little scalpy puppy right here. And this this one too, you know, this trade three was uh, 13 three quarter to... 15 and 3 quarter, 8 ticks. So trade 3 was 8 ticks. So in these three trades, how many total ticks did we make on three trades on ES in the first hour between 6.30, the equity market open, and 7.30? So this is the first, this is the three trades in the first hour. Well, you made 21, uh, 28 on that one. Six on this one is 34. And 34 and eight is 42. Yeah, exactly. There you go. So the question is, did you hit your goal, yes or no, on those three trades? Three longs. Plus... 42 ticks. So let me plug in some numbers here. One lot equals what should I put in there? How many how much how many dollars does that equal? Those three trades, the 28 tick initial pop, the uh, six tick scalper, and the subsequent eight tick scalper, totaling 42 ticks times 1250 is how much? What's 1250 worth? 1250 times 42 is how much? 
How much is that puppy worth? Anybody got a gonculator handy? 42 times 12.50. Right? Yeah, 5.25. Two lot would be 10.50. Yes? So let me ask this question in two different ways. If you traded one lot on all three trades and you made 525 less commission, are you done? Yes or no? And if you didn't trade one and you traded all three trades two lot and made 1050, are you done? Yes or no? So you, in order to answer that question, you'd have to know what your profit goal is, yes? You got to know your profit goal. You see how important that is? I mean, you, you really, in futures trading, you got to know what you're doing. You, you got to be patient and figure out what you're doing. And when you get, you know, you take one or two or three trades. That's why we've always said that one of our main goal in the morning is one or two trades and done. We used to have a saying, one and done. Remember all these years? Ten years had my trading system in business. It's pretty good, huh? A lot of companies these days make it 10 years. This year would be 10 years. We've been saying one and done for 10 years. <laughs> Hard to believe. Well, so we got a question coming in from Jack, and that's a good question. How do you know when, when you have achieved, uh, when you can step your goal up from, say, 500 to now trying to make 1,000? So that's an excellent question. Let me, let me answer it this way. This is probably the best way to answer this, okay? Some of you might not want to hear it, but I'm going to say it anyway. So the stages of the stages of, of, of becoming a successful trader are as follows. And some of you know that. Some of you know this and some of you might not. Stage one, as you start to try to become a profitable learn to trade, is you are going to lose money. Now, the question is, how long are you going to continue to do that? We don't know. But certainly, uh, practicing in sim, practicing taking trades, sorting out the instrument you want to uh, take, learning how to put stops in. We're not talking about stops. We're not talking about trails. When you got runners, when you're trading in a range, we're not focusing on any of that tonight. Keeping it as simple as possible. Minimum criteria or mid band, and if those don't set up for you, you don't take them. So you got to sort all this out. That's what this first stage is about. You're sorting all that out. Which my profit goal be, uh, and then so what's going to happen is stage two. So what's the goal for stage one? What are you trying to get to in stage two? Anybody, anybody know? Stage two. What is your goal to go from stage one to stage two? Anybody have an idea? Oh, I'm coming to the answer to that question, David. I'm com I'm taking a roundabout way to answer your question. By the way, everybody's saying, how do you know how to increase? How I know I should put more contracts on? How do I know I should try to increase my profit goal? How do I know, you know, so essentially what you're saying is, you're asking, how do I know when I should start leveraging up? Now, I'm going to get to that. So just bear with me here for a second. I'm, I'm getting there. That's the end of the story. And when you get to the end there, you get, you get your answer. So hang tight, David, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so the goal on stage two is to get to break even. You just want to get to break even. You want to stop losing money. Exactly, that's right. You want to stop losing money. Now let's talk about that for just a second. Oh, I canceled it. Oh, I gotta do it again. Darn it. Mm. I hate when I do that. 
I'm just going to put just, everybody, you know, I think everybody understands what we're talking about here. So I'll just put an abbreviated version in here. <clears throat> I'm just going to put break even. Okay. Everybody knows that's break even. Stop losing money, right? So now many of you here tonight are in this in this stage. You might possibly be in stage one where you're losing money. Okay. You might even be on the verge of getting to step two. So my question to you is this, how do you get from stage one to stage two? What needs to happen for this transformation to occur? What do you actually need to physically do with yourself and your trading to go from stage one to stage two? Because some of you might be stuck in this, in this sort of loop right here. And you're frustrated because you want to get, get, you want to get to the making money part Limit the time you spend trading, good. Less trades, more profit, good. Stop losing, apply some discipline, more contracts. No, it's not more contracts. It's definitely not more contracts. Trust in, trust indicators and don't take counter trends. How about, how about this? Let me, give you, let me give you some other ideas for how to do that. How about this plan? See if you like this. Identify the trade type you like the best. And then perfect it. Get very, 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 very good on it. On your, I'm going to put this in caps, chosen instrument. I cannot implore you how important instrument selection, profit goals, and trade types are this is everything it, it, you know i mean it, in terms of uh trading successfully this is it in a nutshell right here this is it right here you got to find out the instrument you like you got to find out the type of trade you take minimum criteria mid band etc and then you perfect that so you're going to have to get your win rate up right you're going to have to get your win rate way up so what you're going to find here is that your win rate is going to be sub 50%. Okay, you're going to be losing money. Okay, so you're going to be under 50%. I mean, it's it's like tossing it's like it would be like in, in stage 1 you're like tossing a coin. Success rate. I'm talking about success rate is under 50%. It's break even. Now you're getting around 50%. Success rate. In other words, about half your trades are profitable, about half of them aren't, and you're kind of breaking even. You're making a little bit of money, and then you're losing a little bit of money. Okay, now let's get into the, the fun part. Let's talk about stage three. Now, most of you might be saying something like, okay, this is where I go into the place where I'm making a ton of dough, right? I'm making a ton of money. Do you think you go from stage two at break even to the making a lot of money part? Is that how this is going to work, you think? Stage two, you're breaking even. You've managed to claw your way out of the hole in sim, of course. You want to do all this in sim when you're going through these stages, right? You're kind of you're kind of hit and miss. You know, you, you get one right and you stop out another one. You get another one right and you stop out. You get a glimpse of making some money. Yeah, you want to value. Okay, so now you start making a little bit of money. You start to become a little bit profitable. And trying to get consistency. That's right, Ed. You don't want to get some consistency in here. You want to start figuring out, okay, you know what? ES in the first hour, mid-band trades, I'm like, you know, getting 65 70% win rate. And I'm making, so I'll take a little loss, but it's okay because my winners are a little bigger than my losers. And I start to make a little bit of money. Now your win rate's going up. Now your win rate's probably between 50 and say 60 65% win rate. So you're just starting to eke out some profits. Now, stage four is where you are now consistently profitable. Okay. Now your win rate is up around, you know, 
should be pushing 70 to 85 plus percent win rate. You're, you're seeing the trades con very consistently. You're, you become, you develop a lot of patience for these pullbacks. You wait for markets to just pull right back to you. You're not getting in too early anymore. You know, you're not jump. you know, you're not jumping in at the open, getting all beat up and then digging out of a hole. You, you put that into bed. Now, let me go back and answer your question, David. I believe it was David. There was actually, I think, three or four people asked this question. How do I know uh, how to leverage my positions in futures trading and not just trading one lot anymore if to go from two lot and, say, bump my goal from 500 a day to 1,000 a day, which would be consistently trading two lot or more? And the answer to that question is obviously stage four. You shouldn't be looking at leveraging up with more contracts until you're here, somewhere up in here. This is the stage. So what you got to do is you got to go into your your uh, after you've traded for whatever, you know whatever period of time in the morning, you go into trade analysis. Everybody knows how to do it. I've shown it in webinars. You go into your trade analysis and you pull up your stats. You pull up your stats. How did you do? How many trades did you take that day? How many were profitable? What was your net profit? And if it's coming up into the stage three, upper stage three, stage four area, where it's consistent and you're making money every day, even if it's in sim, or you've gone into stage three, stage four, and you're, you're lightly trading real money. Now, you would want to do this stage four. You, I, I, I wouldn't go, you know, like go from stage three to stage four, and then all of a sudden, wait, I made a little bit of money. I'm going to go put three contracts on tomorrow. No, 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 no. No, you got to be doing this for some period of time, several months. I'd say three to six months in stage four before you start leveraging up with two or three or more contracts. And you'll know. I mean, if you look at your stats and you're good at tracking your stats, you'll know. You'll see it. You'll know when it's time to bump. Yeah, you got to increase your percentage of being profitable. That's what these numbers are. This is. I'm just loosely giving you some some uh, some win rate percentages to track. But essentially, what that means is. You know, how many of your trades are profitable versus how many are losers, right? So if you took four, uh, four trades in a morning, you know, three worked out, one was a loser, what was your win rate? What was your win rate in that morning? 75%, right? Pretty easy. Two trades, one was a loser, you were at 50%. Now, the other fact uh, to work out in here. Uh, it, it, and it does it, it sort of also plays into the whole notion of win rate and um, profitability and skews this argument. I don't want to get too confusing about this because it's pretty simple to understand is let's say that you're a 50 50 sort of break even trader, but you're making adjustments to where your winners are huge. You know, you're making 20, 30, 40 plus ticks on your winners and your losers are only like eight ticks. Okay, now there's an example, and you took two trades. Well, you still netted like what 25 ticks or whatever. So there are cases where you could be in a lower percentage of win rate, but you, you're still making money. So it's you, you got to track your stats. Anybody not know how to track their statistics? Just quick show of hands. Anybody in Ninja Trader platform? Does everybody know how to track your statistics? Anybody not know how to do that? Because I can take a minute and show it if you need to. Yeah, I'm to the point here. Um, I need to learn this. A couple, so several people don't know how to do that. You don't know, Jag? You don't know? Okay. All right, stand by. Give me a second here. Give me a second here. Let's see if I can get my um, it's a control panel done onto this screen real quick off of screen four here.
All right, let me back up a second here. Uh, I, I, I got the uh, I got the control panel up, uh, and let me show everybody how to to track your statistics on how your performance is doing from day to day. So you open up your control center, and you're going to go into um, this one tab called account performance. Now, in here, what you can do is you can you can uh, select the date, and I'm in advanced mode, not basic, okay? So you want to go to the dates. So let's suppose you want to see how you're doing this week to date. So you go all the way back to, say, you know, Sunday or Monday or whenever you started trading. If you just want to look at how you did today, then you pick start day of the 17th, end day of the 17th. You can have your printout in currency or percentage. You pick the instruments that you want to look at. You select the account that you want to look at. So pick your account over here. Okay. So in this case here, what I'm showing is uh, that we're on the account tab. If you hit generate on what I'm showing right here, it would show all the ES trades taken on the 17th on whatever account you choose. Sim 101, you know, your live accounts. Um, sub accounts that you can create, you know, whatever that is. Let me do another scenario. Let's suppose you want to see uh, how you've been trading on crude oil for uh, from Sunday afternoon through today. So you check oil, you pick the account that you trade, sim, live, whatever. You hit generate, and it would spit out a report. And the report would look like this. You're going to see uh, uh, total net profit. You're going to see your losses. Your profit factor is very important. What your drawdown was, this is your losses added up. Sharp ratio, not too important. You can show your start and stop date. Total number of trades that you've taken, long and short, will be shown right here. This is your win rate, your percent profitable. That's it right there. That's a really critical number to watch. right? As In particular, let's say you did... Uh, you know, I, I didn't cr trade crude too much, so this would just show a bunch of zeros on here. Uh, but you would, you know, whatever instrument, if you're actually actively actively trading it, it would actually show all these numbers. This is called your stats. Let's say, let's say you want to see tomorrow. So you get up, you trade, you know, here. Let's say you trade a little bit of yes and a little bit of crude uh, tomorrow morning on the 18th, and you want to see, well, how did I do this week trading yes and crude? Right, so then you hit generate, and all this will populate. This will all fi fill in: average loss, average win, average trade, number of winners, number of losers. All these are your stats. So let's go back over here. Everybody see that? Everybody see how you get your stats? Everybody see that? You want to do that pretty much every day or every other day, or at least once a week. So on that percent profitable number there, this is where this starts to come into play. So you're going to look at it how profitable you were, how many trades you're taking, um, and, and what percentage profitable you are. And then you want to really try to go back, if you can, take a few minutes and say, okay, what trades did I take? Oh, I took a minimum criteria, and I got snagged on that one. Maybe I got to look at that. You know, I took a mid-band. That one worked out great. I made a ton of money on it. Stand by. One second, please. Sorry, I thought I had that off. My apologies, everybody. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, okay, so that, that's where these that's that's where you start to identify. You know, if you do that every day, a couple of days, once a week, twice a week, you do that for a few weeks in a row, um, and you can separate it out. You know, it's one thing in the exploratory process as you're starting to look at what instrument am I profitable you know, you can run ES separately. Boom, generate the thing, print it out. You know, uh, next day you want to see how crude or you know crude oil was for the week or for the day or whatever. You get to run the thing, print it, go back, look at your trades. Now, you know, on the surface you might say to yourself, you know, Charles, look, that's a lot of work. I don't got time to do all that stuff, all the numbers and the thing and how am I doing it? You know, I just got to see if I'm doing okay. Am I making any money? Yeah. No. 
No, you got to – if you really want to be successful at this, you're going to have to put a little bit of time in, right? You're going to have to learn how the trade's set up, watch some webinars, take some live uh, sim trades or practice trades or whatever, and check your stats. The traders I've seen over the years that consistently do this every day from day to day, and you develop a little bit of discipline to do this, because that's the thing about trading is you can get real sort of loose. You know, you're not really looking at what you're doing. You're just kind of getting a feel for it. Mm. To be successful long term, that's going to be pretty challenging for you. Really, seriously, you got to do your got to do your work. I'm going to turn the recorder off. I appreciate it, but I want to look.